Hello everybody and welcome to Twice Reborn, a vampire visual novel. Uh, this game is made by First Steps Cinematics and it came out earlier this year. Uh, I'm going to link it down in, down below in the description. You can find it on Steam, it's 20 bucks if you want to play it by yourself. Uh, this game has voice acting actually, I hope it's kind of good. And I guess I'm going to play the part of the narrator, so... Let's start. It's New Year's Eve, 1999. We're closing. A teenager quickly stepped inside, walked directly to the aisle she wanted, grabbed an action film and placed the DVD in front of the clerk. That'll be 349. Damien stood behind the counter of the video rental store and waited for his 53rd customer that day to count her change. She smacked her gum. He squinted his black lined eyes when she didn't place the money on the counter. Shaking her head, her large hoop earrings jangled. It's getting expensive here. Damien sighed and looked at the clock. 30 more minutes until his shift ended. We have the VHS version. It's cheaper. I'm sure. If I wanted a VHS, I would have gotten one, pendejo. Rolling her eyes, she paid and swiped the rental from the counter before striding away. Finally, he was alone. 30 minutes until the next millennium. Maybe if he was lucky, Y2K, the blackout from all computers, would shut down the damn place. Based on how the news was reporting, everyone expected it. It was always the same work of stacking shelves and checking out customers. He missed when he had time just for himself. This was one of the few businesses in town open late, so they always had the misfits, the stragglers, the late night date crowds. But the rest of the small town was quiet. He couldn't care less. His life wasn't going to change in 15 minutes. Nothing new happened in this town. It had been three years ago since he graduated high school, and he still had the same job. Pressing play on his CD player, he flipped open a guitar magazine he kept next to the register, and his mind wandered away. The door chimed and a tall man walked in. Damien recognized him on sight, another loner like him. Ricky came to town months ago. Damien sometimes joined this wanderer for his cigarette after work, because he had nothing better to do. Even that night, Ricky wore an outfit that looked like he had stepped from a greaser movie. Damien never understood his obsession with vintage goods. Ricky was a little odd, but so was he. What's up? Happy Millennium. Are you gonna watch the fireworks? Nah, I'm heading out. It's time for me to be leaving. Happy 2000, man. Damien's stomach sank. Ricky was planning to move on to the next place. He had been talking about it for days. Where are you going? I'm skipping this loserville. Wanted to stop and say goodbye. I get it. Call me when you get to the next stop. A grin stretched Ricky's face. Don't worry. I'll make sure to keep in touch. Life's too short to stay in one place. There's a fresh a thousand years waiting out there. Gotta experience it. I know. Let's do something to celebrate. No one's gonna come in this late. It's good timing. Uh, I can't go smoke if that's what you're thinking. Shift's almost up and I have a date with Chenchu. I was thinking of getting something to eat. But the only place that's open tonight is the Chinese restaurant on Main Street. Ricky's usual I don't give a shit grin was gone. And as he walked up to the counter, Damien felt a chill. Who wants Chinese? I have something extra fresh in mind. Wait, what? Sharp teeth broke Damien's flesh. His body slammed into the cabinet. Damien punched Ricky in the side, and as he pulled back for a second punch, his arm was grabbed by Ricky. Fingers bruised Damien as his arms were forced to his side. Ricky bit again. Let go, you freak! What are you? Ricky's eyes shone with an eerie light. He pulled away from Damien. 
and his crimson stained lips formed a grotesque smile as he bitterly laughed. Reek, Bellman, you'll understand soon. Ricky's breath reeked of copper. Damien winced as he dropped to the floor with a thud. Ricky laughed as he left the video store, his soft words echoing in Damien's mind. To the new millennium. Three hours later. Falling New Year balloons danced on the video store's monitors as another time zone celebrated Y2K. A newscaster proudly boasted that the massive computer crash that was expected hasn't happened anywhere in the world. People celebrated the new day and danced in the streets, but it was quiet in the video and games to go. The doors swung open and a cute teen wearing a short skirt entered the store. Damien? Sweetie, where are you? You were late picking me up. After a glance to the counter, she knew no one was there. Zenju became distracted as her eyes scanned the colorful rows of neat shelved movie boxes. Browsing a section, she picked up a film title from the shelf before returning it. It was too quiet, and as much as Damien hated his job, he would never leave the lights on and the entrance unlocked. He better haven't forgotten about their date. Zenji walks around. She walked between the shelves, looking down the aisles for her boyfriend. She crossed empty space after empty space. She walked towards the register. Damien's magazine and his CD player was out on the counter, but he was nowhere nearby. A metallic scent teased the air. Her shoes squished down into the carpet. With a frown, she looked down. Large spots of blood stained the carpet around her toes. <coughs> she screamed, tiptoeing through the blood. She stepped around the counter and prayed her boyfriend wasn't dead. Damien! No one was there. Her heart pounded. What if the attacker was still inside? She ran to the front of the store. She reached for the doors. But they were locked. She pulled against them, pounded her small fists against the glass. Help! Somebody! Her hand shook as she pulled out her flip-open keypad cell phone to call 911. A calm voice came from behind her. I'm right here. Two arms grabbed her from behind, and Genju dropped her phone on the floor. A sharp pain came as she felt her life fading away. <coughs> well, that was quite overdramatic, Genju. You just died. It'll be all right. Just respawn, idiot. The year is 2010. Mark Delaware ran past a no standing on the grass sign as he bypassed sprinklers, leapt over a hedge, and landed in a patch of freshly dug dirt. He muttered as he ran with his collared shirt half tucked and his hair half brushed. Mark tore a bite from a bagel before stuffing it in his mouth. The bells of St. George University echoed and Mark cursed. Picking up his pace, he waved to the groundsman and as he turned the corner, he nearly crashed into one of the Catholic institution's blue-robed monks. He shook his head in quiet disapproval. Sorry, Brother Luke. I'll see you later in French. Mark held up his hands in apology, sidestepped him, and entered into a history building. With a strong stride, he approached the double doors of the auditorium. He paused. Behind those heavy doors was Professor Michelson's ancient civilizations class, filled with 500 underclassmen. A glance to his watch told him that he was 10 minutes late. He finished chewing his last bite of bagel, took a deep breath, and opened the door. It seems to be rather empty. Professor Steve Michelson looked up from his lectern and narrowed his eyes at his teaching assistant. Without missing a beat in his lesson, his booming voice continued about the advancements of ancient Roman housing. 
Mark didn't miss the look. His dew-covered canvas shoes squeaked as he slunk low into one of the empty aisle seats. He knew he was going to get a lecture after class on punctuality. A sweet voice whispered at his side. You're late again. Jody Phelps was auditing Professor Michelson's class that semester. Whenever the professor spoke animatedly about the past, she intently listened. She leaned forward and furiously typed notes on her laptop. Her varied expressions are what Mark found charming. She opened a new window on the laptop, and with its touchscreen, she began to doodle. Mark wondered what she could be up to. She tossed her blonde hair over her shoulder as she pouted in concentration. Mark's eyes followed her movements and started to... This is getting kind of weird, Mark. You're a weird fucking dude right now. And started to look at her pale pink sweater. She was so focused she did not even notice his gaze. Jody slid the screen towards Mark. He had to slap his hand over his mouth to keep from bursting out in laughter in the middle of class. There on the screen was a caricature of the professor as a dragon with fire coming from his mouth. A small Mark was getting hit by the flames. I wouldn't lose. A knight always defeats the dragon. Jody rolled her eyes. That was pretty cringe indeed, Mark. Maybe you should shut the fuck up next time. Mark squirmed in his seat, and as he did so, he felt the cold squish of mud in between his... Are you not wearing fucking shoes right now, Mark? The fuck? Mark turned his attention to the professor and wondered if he had also seen the mess. However, the professor was completely involved in his story. In the husband auditorium, students were drawn to him. Eyes and ears locked into every word and expression. Despite Professor Michelson's nerdy look of tweed jackets and bow ties, he wasn't an awkward man. His words invoked an unexpected powerful charisma. He dove into tales of ancient Rome or the Middle Ages as if he knew what it was once like to once live then, because he made class fun. The packed classroom students liked him no matter how much he challenged them. Professor Michelson was one of the most respected instructors at the university. There were rumors about the professor's age, that he had been teaching at St. George University for 20 years. However, the academic looked in his late thirties. His brown brushed back hair had moments of white. His keen eyes had never missed a student out of place. Mark reached over to Jody's laptop and pulled up a new screen. Jody looked up in surprise. He wrote, want to go out. Yeah, sounds good. Maybe you should be doing your fucking job instead of trying to get a fuck buddy tonight, Jody. Mark typed, Friday, lunch at Dive's Diner. Jody nodded yes. Mark beamed. Mark thinks she'll be a good girlfriend. That concludes our section on ancient Roman housing. Make sure you read the readings. Oh, and Mr. Mark Delaware, I will speak with you after class. Rightfully so. Student heckles came from somewhere in the hall as Mark sunk down in his seat. It was not good for the teacher's assistant to be the one called to the front. Mark knew the professor's lectures almost by heart. But maybe he... What the fuck is even your job? You didn't do anything. Jody gave a big smile and a wink to Mark before skipping out the door. Sure, she didn't have to listen to Michelson. Mark reluctantly waved goodbye, but wriggled through the mass of students making their way out of the auditorium. Professor Michelson gave short answers to the small line of them that lingered behind. A few of them were known to Mark, desperate to make an A. They'd ask a thousand questions or try to beg for extra credit. A tactic that never worked. Others in line were the ladies who had a crush on the professor. That's cringe. Mark had heard them say that Michelson was mysterious, hot, sexy. Why would they be so interested in a man who spent his days reading in a basement office? After ten minutes of answering questions, Professor Michelson finally shuffled his students out of the doorway. 
Mark wondered if he would get the long or short lecture this time. He cleared his throat to get Michelson's attention. Yes, sir? Professor Michelson paused before answering. Mark, four years ago, you were the only freshman out of five students who got an A in my largest class. By some miracle, you're still on the dean's list. Yet your timeliness has not improved since the day you enrolled. With a slow shake of his hand, he made his way around the lecture pulpit and off the platform. Mark started to protest, but realized he'd better keep his mouth shut. Adjusting his patched backpack over his shoulders, the teacher's assistant followed as Michelson continued speaking. Come with me, we must speak. I know you don't have class with Brother Luke today until 10, so we should have some time. You expect we'll need that long? Michelson only replied with a frown. Mark quickly nodded. Brother Luke taught him French in the mornings. Along with French, Mark was quick to pick up Russian and Greek. Languages fed his soul, and he would spend hours getting lost in their study. That was one of the reasons why history fascinated Mark. He would love to be able to read primary source documents as they were meant to be read. Okay, Mark had to admit it. He was a little bit of a nerd. Looking at his watch to double check what the professor said, he saw there was plenty of time to speak with the what the fuck. Looking at his watch to double check what the professor said, he saw there was plenty of time to speak with Professor Michelson and still grab a coffee before the brothers' class. As they left the auditorium, Mark saw the damage his canvas speakers left behind. A galaxy of dirt footprints decorated the polished wooden floor. He closed his eyes and hoped that Professor Michelson didn't see the evidence. The older man did, and gave Mark a knowing smile. Instead of crossing the muck and walking through the crucifix-topped main doors, the professor led the way through a side passage. It was a perfect North Colorado day. The skies were clear and it was a constant 60 degrees Fahrenheit. The beautiful campus was quiet far from drudging traffic and lost tourists. A guitarist plucked at acoustic strings as he sat on the blanket beneath one of the many stone statues placed around campus. Michelson kept to the shade as he avoided stepping on students stretching themselves over the sidewalk and sleeping on the pine-shaded grass. A few broke campus rules and smoked on the lawn. The grassy scent overpowered the fresh air. Mark coughed and picked up his pace. The professor frowned at the students but continued to lead the way. Well, that's looking like it's all the time I have for today, so... Uh, I'll upload more of this. If you liked what the video, consider liking and subscribing. It helps me out. Maybe, I don't know. But, well, I'll see you guys next time. See ya.